Okay. Perfect. We are rolling. We are rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Well. Hello, Claude. Hey. How are you? I am largely good. Yeah, you look good. You look rested, even though you said that you wake, woke up really early. I did, but I went to bed extremely early, so... What time is early? I think, like, nine-something. Nine o'clock? Life be life in right now. How do you go to bed at nine? How? I, it's not by choice. I, my body just gives up. I, I want... I don't say I want my body to give up. <laughs> but, like, I've tried. I've tried. And I just can't go to bed at that time. I feel like the night is still young. Like, at nine o'clock last night, I was watching Loki. Like, right. it's... Come on. I Actually, no. Gen... Is it Gen Z? Gen... Do you watch I, I, TV? Not really. I'm not going to lie. Every now and again. Every now and again. I'm currently excited. I'm about to geek out. I don't want people to say that I'm a geek. Just go on. We're all, we're all <laughs> inner geeks. Um, by the time people would have seen this, I would have uh, been enjoying the final episode of Attack on Titan. Um, oh, I haven't which watched I've that. I've been looking forward to since. Is that on Netflix? It's not, no. It's uh, on websites. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say which ones. It's on websites. <laughs> so when one doesn't work, you do it. <laughs> I'm, of course, I'm watching it on a completely legal website. Of course so you of course, are. As a law-abiding citizen. Yeah. Mm. Well, I haven't heard of it, but, you know, if you're saying it's, it's good... So honestly, I think it might be the best piece of TV ever made. Okay, no, this is serious. No, I'm being deadly serious. I would actually fight people about this one. Wow. Physically? Verbally? No comment. <laughs> okay, well... <laughs> Um, it's really good to see. We we you were too. saying we haven't actually physically seen each other for like a month. Yeah, um, just online meeting so far. Yeah, just online meeting, which yeah, regularly. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's still lovely to to see you in person. So, obviously, you know, with these episodes, um, we really wanna, well, I really wanna unpick, get to know you a bit more, um, let the audience know you a bit more. People, people, people just want to know what you're doing. You know. Oh, I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what have you been doing this past month that I have not seen you in person? Right. But before we get into that, I want to break the ice a little bit. Okay. I'm going to try something different because obviously you're an intelligent man. You know, you, you, you're you well-versed. You've been around, you know, well, not been around, but you know what I mean. <laughs> wow. So I've got some riddles for you. Okay. I was thinking oh. of the perfect icebreakers and okay. I was like... Let's get a riddle. Okay. This, so let's see. This we're going to go start. Just, we're going to just do a few. Mm-hmm. We're going to start really, I won't say easy, but okay. you know. Okay. First one. Mm-hmm. What has to be broken before you can use it? An egg. What? Is that right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see. Okay. Okay. Wow. I, if I had to, I would be, anyway. Um, okay. Next one. What month of the year has 28 days? February. Oh, let me, let me do one more time. What month of the year has 28 days? What month of the year has 28 days? <laughs> okay, let me to tell you. October. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> 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 yes, all of them. Are uh, you so okay. September, right. October, yeah. what? All of them. Okay. Um, to be fair, the cameraman actually tried to give me a clue, so that's <laughs> what I said. Oh my gosh. See, I'm so concentrated. I didn't even see you there. Okay, next one. What, what question can you never answer yes to? <laughs> never answer yes to? this one <laughs> what? okay no are you asleep yet okay apparently that's a i would not have got that one okay i would not have got that let's one go, let's do let's do are you going to continue to embarrass one more me no, on no, my no, podcast? no 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 i know <laughs> what goes up but never comes down what goes up but never comes down Precipitation, I don't know. <laughs> think about it. Think about it in your personal... Think about it personally. What goes up but never comes down? What goes up never comes down? My mood. Wow, okay, that's good to know. Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> your age. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
That was hard. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, we all have our blind spots, you know. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Rid- riddles are um, not the easiest for me. So it's actually quite nice to get somebody else to do them for a change. Um, do it on camera as well. It, I know, yeah, right? Yeah. Mm. yeah, giving everybody a chance as well to think <laughs> about things. Thank you for listening to today's episode. If you haven't already, make sure you sign up to our mailing list at dreamnation.co forward slash mailing list. And from there, you'll be able to find out about all the things that we have coming for you. Um, but yeah, uh, today I, I wanted to talk to you about something that I think you do really well. Um, yeah, I, I'm trying to give like, you know, three parts to it, but no, that, that's it. Something that I think you do really well. Mm-hmm. But I also see how much you put in to be able to do it really well. Right. And that is multitasking. Okay. Yes. Um, or juggling. Juggling a lot. Um, for people that don't know, maybe I'm not going to be doing a, a whole intro about you. <laughs> um, but, you know, you're on, you sit on quite a few boards. You're also, you also have a full time job. You also have in. You also mentor people, and you've start. You've got Dream Nation, and that in itself as well. In the last five months, um, especially before the job that you got was intense. Extremely, extremely intense. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm really keen to kind of understand the world of juggling and I think mainly because I'm at the stage as well right now where I'm juggling a a part-time job um freelance work as well as building my own business it's like I'm struggling yeah Mm. (laughs) um we've had conversations you're like are you okay (laughs) yeah I'm I'm on the edge Mm. (laughs) of burnout um so yeah first of all like do you actually see it as juggling do you actually see it as multitasking? As multitasking, do I see it as that? I don't actually. Um, maybe because of the way that my life is organised, it all feels like a just different tracks that are happening at the same time. Mm. Um, so yeah, to me, I guess technically it's multitasking, but I don't really feel like it because mm. I don't believe in multitasking. You don't believe in multitasking? No. I, Sorry? I know. Oh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> you don't... Be, okay, well, in, explain. I don't believe somebody can do two things at the same time to a high standard. Um, oh, wow. Even when you are doing it, as in, like, you're trying to, I don't know, have a conversation and make breakfast at the same time. What I've learned over the years is that all you're doing is switching between both tasks really quickly, but it then means that you're doing both tasks below the standard that they could be. Ooh. So, when when I say I don't believe just in, just got really deep. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I say I don't believe in multitasking, what I actually mean is that when I'm in any given moment in time, I'm fully in that moment. And I, I remember saying this to you when we first started working. Yes, is that as long as you have me in a meeting, I will 100 percent be there. I'm not going to be speaking to you and then doing something online or mm. whatever. Like you have my whole attention. Mm. But the minute that meeting ends whatever I'm going to next has my full attention in that regard. Okay. Yeah, you have have said that a few times to me, but I don't think I really took it as that you you don't believe in multitasking because I think how do you, in that moment, give all your time to one thing even though you have so many other things that are circulating in your mind that you need to do? Mm. Like, how do you fully... Because now you're saying it, I'm thinking, yeah, do I actually ever fully give myself to one thing so what what it sounds like you're asking is am I ever fully present or how do you become present that's yeah I think that's what it is and it's practice Mm. so that is literally what meditation is for it's to teach you to be present in any given moment but when you do things like meditation we describe it as the practice of meditation because it's a skill that you will continue to develop but something that you do you need to also continue to get better at as time goes on so in my early 20s, I invested a whole lot of time into meditation. I mean, like hours and hours and hours. Mm. So it then means that it's easier for me now to be fully present in a conversation, in a meeting, in a task or things of that nature. Mm. Not perfect at it, but I'm a much better than before I started. And the other practical thing that I do is if I do have an idea or task that does come to mind when mm. I'm in another setting or meeting, mm. I will write it down straight away. And the minute that it's written down in somewhere that I know that I'm going to come back to, then my brain can be like, it's safe, let it go, focus on where you are right now. Mm, Okay. Yeah, that actually does make a lot of sense. 
Okay, so being present then, what does that exactly look like to you? Like being present in a situation, what does that, like give me an example of one of the things that you do and that you're like, yeah, I'm completely focused on it. It's hard, giving an example would be hard. I feel like the example should be more how it feels to be around me. So you shouldn't feel like I'm distracted. You shouldn't feel like I'm looking at my phone or writing a a message to somebody else or thinking about my next meeting or my last meeting or things of that nature. Like, I'm very intentional about not bringing things into other areas. So even if the last thing that I did really irritated me, in fact, you've been... You've been there before when I've been irritated by something. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And it's you so... (laughs) But you also knew that within an hour, hour and a half, I had another thing. I was going to go and host an event. So I had to be 100% present when that happened because if I come to that event and I'm now greeting people with bad energy or or I'm still irritated, people pick up on that. Mm. And then I know that that will then set the tone for that next event which would then mean that the energy of that won't be what I would have wanted it to be. Mm. So, do you remember what I did? Yeah, you you were in the car and you um, put on some, like, meditation practices and stuff like that. Yeah. And then you were like, oh, I feel much better now. Literally, so... But I was also in that car Mm. and I didn't feel any change. (laughs) (laughs) As in, you didn't change internally or you didn't see a change in me? No, I saw a change in you, but Mm. I didn't... I like, I'm trying to think, maybe meditation is not something that I have properly invested time into to grasp and understand because, like I said, I was in, I was in the car with you while you were meditating and I didn't feel like... So there are two reasons why. Okay. Well, three reasons why, actually. Okay. The first reason is that you didn't really take part in it in the sense of it was given instructions, but you wasn't really doing them. Hmm. So that will be part of it. The second reason why is because you was multitasking. So if you remember, you was having to deal with some emails to yeah. do something else. So your your brain was fully somewhere else at that time. Mm. Um, and the third reason is because I can now switch it on and off more easily because of the hours and years, basically, of practice that happened before this point. So even if you was fully in that moment and practicing, it still would have been harder for you to get to that point. Mm, I get you. Outside of just work, I have... I am married, so it's like multi how I see multitasking and prioritization stuff like that is a bit different. Do you feel that like how is it for you? Obviously you're not married, you may you're you may be in a relationship or et cetera or, or not, but do you feel like not having that additional um responsibility allows you to f- flex on how much you can be present with or how much you can do? No. I f- I'll be exactly the same. You'll be exactly the same. the same. How do you know? Because it's intentional. Although I'm not married, I still have many relationships, family members, friends, mm-hmm. etc. Mm-hmm. So I know what I'm like with people. And I know the way that I think and operate in many, in different scenarios. Yeah. And I know that when I'm with people, I don't change. I will always be present there and then. If I need to do something else, I'll let you know. So I'll tell you, okay, right now I need to do X, Y, or Z. Mm. So if you give me five, 10, 15, an hour, um, then I will be back with you. But right now I need to do this. Because okay. one of, it's actually one of my few pet peeves is when people are multitasking when you're meant to be talking or spending time with me. So yikes! as a result, I don't your do quality that time. To, is that, what's your love language? Oh, love what's, languages. Yeah, your they are top that's, two. Top, oh, you could give me. I've got three. You actually. can give them they're, in order. They're three that are. Um, one is like fully at the top, which is words of affirmation. Oh, seriously. One hundred percent. I didn't know. Um, I'm quite an affirming person. You no, you. So, what, uh, love languages work in a way that what do you like mm-hmm. and what does the person oh I know yeah but what you also might notice is the thing that you like tends to be the way that you default to show and love to people mm, that's true so de- like one of the reasons why I can be so complimentary or take the time to like point out when someone's done something really well mm. is because I really appreciate when people do that for me oh. and it also really hurts when the opposite happens for me as well so and that's the thing of love languages, they much as they are the way to show you love, they're also the easiest way to hurt you yeah, as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so words of affirmation. Words of affirmation was number one. Number two and three, they were linked at the same score, 
was uh, physical touch and acts of service. Okay. So, and quality time was really low and guess was literally zero. Why quality time really low? I don't know. I feel, I can't tell you why, but I will say this, like with a lot of my good friends, even if I go for months without seeing them, it doesn't feel, there's no love loss from my Mm. end. Like I will meet you and see you as if like I just saw you last week. Mm. And so there's never an issue from that standpoint. But then when I'm with you, I want to be fully present and I'd like you to also be fully present. I hear you. So I don't need large amounts of quality time, but when it's there, it needs to be good. Yeah, I hear you. Hey guys, I just wanted to let you know that on November the 24th, 2023, we will be hosting our first workshop of the year. It's going to be focused on helping you to become a board member. For more information, visit the Dream Nation website at dreamnation.co. That's dreamnation.co. Okay, so back to um, the different things you do. How, how did you, I know you've got a workshop coming up about becoming a board member, but how did you decide the things that you were going to dedicate your time to, especially because you would be quite stretched across different areas? Like, when did you, yeah, how did you decide, like, okay, yeah, I'm going to make this decision to give my time to this. I'm going to make my, I'm going to make a decision to not give my time to that. Like how, mm. yeah. What goes through your head? If I'm honest, it's because I only have one objective and that is to make Dream Nation a success. Mm. That is the only, when it comes to my career and most of the choices in my life, that's what matters to me. So how do I become successful with this mission of empowering people to become practical dreamers? And every choice that I make will be in line with helping me move further with that. Mm. So for example, the board roles that I take on, they're accomplishing a couple of things. One, it's an additional income stream, which is obviously helpful for funding the work that we do. Mm -hmm. Um, Two, it's fulfilling part of the mission of helping people to become practical dreamers because I realized that although I can give people information, I can give people opportunities and things of that nature, training, et cetera, to help Mm -hmm. them grow. Sometimes there are things in your life which are bigger than you that stops you from being able to pursue your dream. And those will normally be systematic things or things on the societal level. Yeah. Whereas by being a board member, it puts me in positions where I get to work on removing some of those barriers from people's lives. Wow. So then yeah. they actually have a clearer pathway that if they choose to go and pursue their dreams, now those, some of the systematic things are gone. So that's the second way that being a board member helps. And the last thing, the last part of it, why it's useful is being a board member, especially because I started quite young, has been equipping me with the skills that I need to be the best possible executive in the future. So some people might have noticed I kind of skipped quite a few career stages in my day job because in my day job, I'm a director of innovation. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) But I got there relatively quickly because, and this is one of the things the recruiter said to me, was combining my entrepreneurial experience with my board experience meant that I was a very safe bet to be Mm. able to take on such a senior level role within the organization that I work for currently. So I'm right now developing, through being a board member, I've been developing the skill sets that I would need to be a great leader because if I fulfill my my goal for Dream Nation, then it will become a publicly traded company and I would like to still be good enough to be the CEO of that company when it happens. And the reality is, is, we still do live in a world where prejudice does exist. So as a young black man, I am aware that I'm not gonna be given as many opportunities to fail as other people will be um, mm. that, that have the same opportunity. So by the time I get to that point where I'm the CEO of a publicly trading company, mm. I need to be excellent. Otherwise, I might not keep that position for very long. So that's part of my training too. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure, but it's, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Life yeah. is, that's just life. That's life is yeah. exactly it. I really like what you said. Um, I really like what you said about basically everything you're doing is to further Dream Nation. Um, I think that is such an important point because like, if I, if I reflect on the decisions I've made in my career as well, like if I've taken a job and I see that it's actually not benefiting me in the long run for the goal. It's like, okay, that's a reason to leave. Mm. Um, but it has to be very clear what the goal is. Otherwise, you're just going to be taking any opportunity. You know, it might further you financially, but it's actually it's actually causing a stagnation or a um, distraction to the actual 100%. overall so goal. So I know for me, for example, 
last year I actually got offered a really, really good job in terms of salary and like high level position. It was the CEO of an organization role that I was it offered. It was a CEO. So it was a CEO role, yeah, that I was offered. Well. Um, for a good paying job, like I said, but I turned it down. And at the time, I, it was significantly more money than I was making at the time. And it looks like a great opportunity on paper. But I understood that taking on that particular role would have derailed me because the people that I would have had to report to, the board of the organization that I would have had to report to, mm. in all my research shows that they were not chaotic, but they wouldn't have been, it wouldn't have been a healthy working environment for me. Yeah. And I would have understood that the amount of pressure, stress, and the impact it would have on my well-being and mental health, although I'd have the money, would begin to impact my, what I'd be able to give to Dream Nation. Mm. So if I were to now be stressed out all the time and then now have to be a boss to yourself or other members of the team, yeah. and I'm giving you that energy, you're not gonna wanna be here. Or if you was, you're not gonna give me your best. Yeah, so exactly. I did need to make a decision that, although at the time hurt, cause I wanted and needed that money, um, yeah. it ended up working out for me in the long run. Yeah, that's, that's the hard thing. I've been having conversations with people about when things look good, but they're just not in your plan. Like mm. it's very hard to decipher. I mean, I personally am a Christian, so I, I have my ways of deciphering, but it, even in that, like it can still be like, okay, this is a good thing. And it can't, you can see how many doors that it could open, but it's, but it's a distraction. Yeah. Um, and sometimes in life you're told that okay yeah but you know you go through things and you learn the lesson but what if this was not even a lesson that you had to learn had to learn <laughs> like yeah, yeah. yeah so um one other thing i wanted to ask you just to um yeah just to wrap just to wrap up mm -hmm. uh what what would you say is worth getting out of bed for wow what is worth getting out of bed for? Do you want me to give you context? Yes, please. Okay, so I w got a job opportunity. It didn't. It, it fell through, but um, I I went and asked some mentors in the business, and they were like, "If it's worth getting out of bed for, you should go for it." And I was like, I found it really hard to understand what is really worth getting out of bed for. Mm -hmm. And in the end, it fell through, so I didn't have to make that decision. Yeah. But I've always thought, like, in this world of juggling and finding, you know, and taking on opportunities, like, how mm -hmm. do I know that something is worth getting out of bed for? I'm going to say, probably if it does one of two things, either it truly excites and fulfills you, or it's very practical in terms of accomplishing a specific goal that you have right now. Mm. Because I would love to be able to say that every job you take on or every opportunity you take on is gonna be fun and fulfilling. That's a lie. That's not how life works. And if you go through life with that mentality, then you're not gonna succeed. Mm. Um, this is right on top of my mind because one of my mentees is, I've been trying to, trying to shake this out of him. Like, it's not always going to be fun. It's gonna be hard sometimes. So if, the opportunity in front of you is pushing you forward, propelling you, then then that's worthwhile. Yeah. Probably not indefinitely. You shouldn't be doing things that are harming you or detracting from you for long periods of time. I don't recommend that. But if it is accomplishing a part of your longer term vision, great. Or like I said as well, if it does fulfill you, if it's making you happy, if it is helping you to become a better version of yourself, then that's worth getting out of bed for. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. We release a new episode every Sunday, so make sure that you subscribe and follow us so that you never miss out. If you'd like some more inspiration while you wait for the next new episode, then check out the recommendation above. Don't forget to follow us on social media and you can send us a question or a dilemma that you'd like us to answer on the podcast. This is Claude Williams, you've been watching Behind the Dreams and we look forward to seeing you at the next Dream Nation event.